Um, and we have a special guest on, um, this is Ashley and I, um, honestly have not connected with Ashley on like a one-on-one, -on -one, um, level. And I'm so excited to, to hear more about her story. Um, but I first heard of her, it was like the first thing that happened at conference this past year. <laughs> It was literally like, um, right off the bat, everybody was just crying. Um, and we got, I'll let, I'm going to let you tell the story, Ashley, cause I'm sure, um, you can do a lot better job, um, explaining exactly what happened, but I just want you to kind of start off and share how long you've been in the business, um, and share a little bit about that award and what it meant to you too. Guys, I'm so honored to be here. Um, yeah, it's kind of random. Kelsey and I, like we would cross paths like in in the Lexus lounge and she was like wait you're the girl and I'm like wait I know you because I Facebook stalked you hey girl you know <laughs> um but my name's Ashley Kreeshock you guys I've been in business now it'll be six years this September I'm a triple diamond and I um have a really interesting story because I feel um like it it's resonates with a lot of people but it's really different too so I don't know how many of you guys have ever fallen in like the timeline trap or the comparison trap of thinking like, oh, you know, Susie promoted so quick or this happened or that happened. Well, I was the girl who had no experience, no network, no knowledge of social media. I was newly relocated a thousand miles away from home, um, had maybe 200 friends on Facebook, didn't even know what Instagram was. Like how embarrassing is that? Um, definitely have never used Snapchat or, or I haven't ventured into TikTok yet, like you cool people. Um, and I was just like, gosh, like we literally need to figure out how we're going to survive. Cause I moved from Palm beach, Florida. I'm from West Palm, moved up to my husband's hometown. Cause we were a one income family. So now I'm in this little tiny town in Pennsylvania. It takes me 45 minutes to get to a good pediatrician. I have no malls, no Starbucks, no nothing. And here I am maxing out our last credit card to start a social media business when I literally have no idea who I'm going to talk to, what I'm going to do. And um, kind of extra long story short, you guys, I went triple diamond in eight months on social media. The girl with no network, the girl with no experience, the girl with no clue what she was doing, the girl with every single checkbox against her as to why this business would not work. I had two things. I had hustle and I had heart. I was willing to learn, I was coachable, and I was willing to fall over and get back up again as many times as it took to get us out of our situation. And for me, my goal was 500 bucks a month. So if y'all wanted 500 bucks a month or still want 500 bucks a month from this business, I think you need to drop 500 in the comments or some money emojis or something because usually the magic number is 500. So I just kind of faithed it till I made it. I just did the work. I woke up early. I stayed up late. Um, yes, I was a stay at home mom. Okay. Of a two year old. So I didn't have a, a nine to five in the way, but I did have a, a child in the way 24 seven. So I'm sure a lot of you guys are feeling that right now, right? Cause our, our kids are home due to this situation. So I literally just soaked up every single thing my upline said, whether it was good, bad, made me feel nervous, made me terrified, go live. We didn't even have Facebook live back then. I'm just going to throw that out there. Um, but I was like, oh, you want me to create a video? And I would literally record the video like 300 times before I posted it on Facebook. And I was like, oh, Jesus, you know, please. This, that was me. Okay. So the Ashley you see right now is like Ashley version. 300.0. Okay. It was not the person that I was five and a half years ago. And the reason why I wanted to tell you guys about the timeline thing is because I went triple diamond in eight months, but did you not know, just hear me say I've been in business almost six years and I'm a triple diamond and I'm freaking proud. I don't worry about what's happening left, right, up or down. I've been blessed by this business in so many different ways. I paid off over $75,000 worth of debt gone. All the cars are paid off. Our house is paid off. Every single ounce of debt we have is paid off. I've been able to live more, give more, do more. And that's kind of how the more award thing happened, which was total shock. I had no idea that that was happening. Uh, but I was a girl, you guys, that I would window shop, like go to the mall just to get out of the house and just walk in circles. Like I knew I had no money, but I was like, I don't want to stay in the house. Like I'd go to Target and it was like, okay, I guess I'm going to put that on the red card. <laughs> you know, like I just, we didn't have it and we weren't poor. We just were paycheck to paycheck. Right. And there was just not a lot of extra. I was selling old coach purses, anything I could find old toys, like ignore the fact that this is my basement playroom. Cause it's a mess behind me. But, like I was just like doing everything I could to get by. Okay. 
And then bam, all of a sudden I go triple diamond in eight months and life looked really different. So Kelsey, do you want me to talk about the award or do you want to stop me there? Yeah, I want, I want, I wish I like had the video of it because it was so cool. Like I wish I could pull it up on YouTube and play it. Oh, it's on my Facebook. It's, whew. Yeah. And it was Blur. just so cool. Um, and just kind of explain what happened because I mean, there's so many questions that we can go into, but I just, I just want people who weren't there because, you know, we have a lot of new people that are probably on um, and I want them to hear kind of the heart of the company. And I think you represent that so well. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Yeah. Whew. Okay. So I, um, because like I am the kind of person where money is not like a denominator for me. I, I love money. We all love money. We want to live in more money, give back more, do more things. Like I've been able to do all the family vacations, all the Disney trips. Like for Christmas time, we took our kids to Disney at Christmas because we could. And it was like a $10,000 trip and we got paid for in cash because we can right? Because we did the responsible things and paid off the debt and did all the things. And guys, when I started this business, I was like, okay, like, please, God, just bless me with 500 bucks a month to pay that student loan bill and to relieve some pressure from my husband. And I was so homesick and so depressed and overweight and miserable and isolated and, and lacked confidence. It was, it was a totally different person. Okay. So I vowed to myself because I have a big heart, but my heart's always bigger than my wallet. Can I get an amen? Okay. So I was like, if I could ever get myself out of the hole that I had dug myself in, I was always going to do whatever I could to help other people. It's just always how I've been. So one of the years at conference, I don't remember what year it was. Um, it was like one of the years where Mark had us like turn around, Kelsey, you'll remember. And you were like, you had your arm out and you were like letting go of things. And he was talking about like being good, being great and being legendary. And I was already a triple diamond. I already achieved this epic success. I already paid off all the things. And I was kind of at that point where I did it, but I haven't arrived, right? I'm not ambassador diamond. I don't have a bunch of ambassador diamonds on my tribe. Like I have not arrived, but I remember sitting there and he was like, legendary is paying off your mom's debt. And I was like, mm, I'm going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to do that right now. Right. And I, couldn't at the time, but like I made that my purpose. So then I got my mom to diamond. I, I did this, got her the $10,000 bonus, started paying her bills, started like all these epic things started happening. And then it started trickling down to uh, once I helped my mom, right? Priorities, family, whatever, whatever. I started being able to do things for friends and for family and then my tribe. So um, Amanda and I had connected on social media. I had never met her in person. She was somebody who had uh, a really heavy background of like abuse and jail time and um, addiction and just a really bad past. So nobody would give her a chance. And the beauty of this business is you don't have to be anybody but yourself. And you don't have to hide in like the shadows of maybe some poor choices that you made because that doesn't define you. So I remember the day she messaged me and she said, hey, I've been watching you for a long time, but I'm not, I, I'm not worthy of any of this. Like she was already disqualifying herself in the message asking me if she could do it. Like, can I do it? But I really can't, but I'm going to ask anyways. And she told me, like, I have this rap sheet, this happened to me, that happened to me. And I don't care. I don't really care what your past was, right? What I care about is where your heart is now and what we're going to do to move forward. So lo and behold, she joins the business. You guys, this is a mom of, of six, actually five and pregnant with her six. And she was only 29. And I just had twins, pregnant with her six, just a lot of children, a lot of things happening. Started the business in February, okay? And unfortunately, she passed away really suddenly over, in, like as she was sleeping, it was a sleep apnea incident. A couple days after she turned 30 years old, just died. Now this is a woman who's got a four month old baby up to a nine year old, six children, okay? And it was just this overwhelming sense of like, this girl has nobody. She's got her mom, right? But nobody, there's no, no person in her corner, no friend in her corner. And I had watched her from the, the trans, I guess the, you know, the growth that we encounter in this business. And the thing I want to preach to you guys is if you will peel back the layers of your own onion and allow your team in and allow like Kelsey and the rest of your leadership in and let God in if that's what you're called to do or whatever, you're going to grow so much to where like, you might not have a story right now about like, I'm making money y'all. Okay. But you're going to have a story of like, I'm more confident. I found a community. Like I am, this is a family, like, and the vibe that you get. So she had grown so much in the time that she was with us. And I didn't know her mom. I didn't know anybody. I just knew her as being alone with her husband. And that was it. 
lo and behold, she passes away. All this stuff happens. And it's like, I sprung into action. I had no clue who to talk to or what I was doing, but it's like, I made the GoFundMe account. I paid all the fees. I, I sent di diapers and wipes and like literally any formula, money, like just guys, I couldn't even afford a shirt for my own kid five and a half years ago, let alone take care of someone else's six kids that I didn't even know. And I just kept trying to come up with more ideas and things to do and what to, how to help and what can I send and who can I help? And it was just crazy. And um, all of that to say, apparently Amanda's mother got a hold of Cami Pentecost like days before conference and they created that more love award which i had no clue was happening and it was basically you know what is our word of the year you guys our word of the year is more and what does more mean to you okay in the beginning we're more selfish because we need the money for ourselves you know we've got our own problems our own bills our own hardships our own debt our own home and foreclosure right we've got all the things okay but what happens next after you achieve that? Because see, if you stick around long enough and you work hard enough, you're going to cross all that off. And then what are you doing? So for whatever reason, Amanda showed up on my social media. And for whatever reason, I was put in her path, right? That's a God thing. That ain't an Ashley thing. Okay. And then all of a sudden she passes away and it's like, what? I could have walked away, right? Corporate canceled her account. She passed away. Accounts canceled. There's no financial benefit. I, I don't care. That's not why I'm here. It's like you constantly level up and then all of a sudden you're just put in this place. So it's like, okay, they're going to Disney because they had a Disney trip plan and her mom calls me no lie every day. Like I'm almost like a daughter to her now. She talks to me all the time and her mom's like, should we go to Disney? I said, absolutely. Because those babies deserve to go to Disney. Then I'm sending bears with her mom's face on a t-shirt. So they have mommy bear there and then I'm spending money doing this and this and I don't even care. It's just coming from my heart. So that's what the More Love Award was essentially, was just going above and beyond. So if you have a heart for, for giving back and you've got big visions or missing trips or things you want to go on, this company can facilitate that. And there's about 80,000 other things I did for them that I'm sure I can't remember right now because I wasn't keeping score. But um, just so you guys know, if you were there, I had no idea that that was happening. And, I, and the video is on my Facebook. It's on public. If you guys go to my Facebook, you'll see it. And I was literally like convulsing and I'm like, I didn't even, it was like Charlie Brown when things were like, wah, wah, wah. I'm like, that must be what a panic attack feels like. Cause I've never had one, but it was just like so unbelievable full circle. And since then, again, we just continue on. Like, what else can I do for the kids? How can I help? Um, we're doing butterfly release. I got a thousand dollars. Shout out to anybody who was at Pittsburgh. When I had Cami here at Pittsburgh last month, we collected a thousand dollars and I was able to send them a thousand dollars in cash app just for our gives back. So it's just constantly me looking at ways that I can live more and give more and do more. And it would have literally never happened if it wasn't for this business. So I'm just so freaking humbled. I love that, dude. And like, there's so many things, you know, so I just want to say thank you for being you. Like, that is so freaking awesome. Like, can we just get some claps or something in the comment for, or in the comment section for Ashley? Because I think that so often, you know, like you're right. Like when we first joined, we're, we're just more selfish. Like we're, we're, and, and here's the thing is in order to give out, we do have to be selfish. Like if you didn't, if you weren't selfish at first, then you wouldn't be able to, to do the things that you did, right? Like, because you weren't even able to take care of your own family. And that's what, like, it's so hard to communicate all of that stuff. Like when you're posting on Facebook or when you're posting on Instagram or doing TikTok videos or whatever. And it's like, we want to show so many people, like, this is the community that we have. These are the people that we just want to love on you. Like, we just want to show you like what freaking like amazingness you have inside of you and the beautiful beauty of you not even knowing that you received that award because you weren't doing it for an award. You weren't doing it because somebody said, Hey, if you do X, Y, and Z, then you'll get this reward. You were doing it because that's what the right thing to do was, but you had grown because of the business, you know, and it's not that the business is responsible for what you did because most people wouldn't do that. But like the fact that you were able to be comfortable with your personal situation enough to be able to give out to other people is something that we should all be striving for. And so I think God re rewards people that understand that I want to be successful so then I can show and give more to other people, not so I can have more. Yeah. Right. And, and so I love that. So tell us about, um, kind of 
what that shift was for you. Like when you jumped in, you had no experience, 200 Facebook brands, 200 Instagram brands, whatever the case was. Um, what did that look like for you going triple? Like, did you know it was happening? Like, did like what was happening, like the magnitude of it? Or were you just kind of like, I'm just putting my head down and getting to work? Oh my gosh. Okay. So I had no idea what was happening. I was just like, you know, if, if you ever heard Mike Patillo, when he says like ignorance on fire, I was like, okay, like we're going to do this. Right. And I had, I had no story was I was telling myself, it was a mindset thing. Like, Oh, I have no story. I'm not successful. What am I going to do? Well, who, what am I going to say? People are like, Oh, okay, Ashley, you've done joined a pyramid scheme, you know? And it was just, I had no support to the point of like my own mom. Okay. was like, okay. I'll see you when you lose your money, honey, love you. And she didn't become a customer until my eighth month when it was like, and here's a $13,000 paycheck. Do you believe me now, mom? You know, like, come on. So I think we have to kind of peel it back a little bit and say, hey, I had all the negative Nancy's, including my own mother. Okay. I had all the people mocking me. I was a figure and fitness competitor. I don't know if any of you have any bodybuilding or figure and fitness friends, but when you start talking about fat patches, and how you're going to put this sticker on your body and you're going to look like a snack. People are like, okay, you know, and they're like the most ruthless people. No offense to any bodybuilders on this zoom right now. Love you guys. Um, but they're ruthless. I'm just gonna throw it out there. So it was like openly being mocked openly people posting on my Facebook, laughing, wrapping each other in Saran wrap, like, Oh, really not fun. Okay. So that was like what I was up against. So I was like, okay, it's mind over matter. If I see all these other people doing it, it's not fake. Okay. I just have to get there. You have to do epic things for people to believe in your, not your worth, but what you're capable of. Right. So you have to overcome those things. That's just part of the process. Like you don't just wake up and you're like, I'm going to make a million dollars today. No, but you can make a million dollars in the next couple of years. Right. So I think for me in terms of the mindset shift was in the beginning, it was desperation because it was literally like you do this or you go back to work. And I didn't move from West Palm Beach to Uniontown, Pennsylvania to not be home with my kid. That was a no-go. So your why has to be so deeply rooted that you're going to run like your pants are on fire. And it really doesn't matter who says what because you can't pay your bills with other people's opinions. So what anyone else said meant nothing because they weren't wiping my tears. They weren't paying my bills. They weren't FaceTiming my mom in tears that I took her six month old first grandson away from her and moved to Pennsylvania. They weren't dealing with my depression. They, they didn't, they weren't there. Okay. And you know, what's really fun when you get to the mountaintop and you push through all those people that just the ignorance was bliss and nobody really knew what you were doing. Cause you didn't really know what you were doing. And you can send them like a gift card to Ruth Chris and say like, enjoy that steak. I just wanted to send this to you. I've done that. $250. I just wanted to send this to you. Thanks for all the love and, and support, you know, and you can do things like that because you have the freedom to do that. So I think you just have to make a decision. You guys hear that all the time. I like just have to decide. Have you ever heard, had someone tell you that Kelsey might've told you, you just have to decide. You just have to decide. And you're like, okay, Kelsey, you're an ambassador diamond. Like you've decided to, you know, and, but guys, you, you literally just have to say, Hey, this is what I can control. My circle is what I can control. I can't control other people's opinions. I can't control coronavirus. I can't control that pigs fly from the sky. I can't control if my freaking toilet backs up and there's a flood in my house. Like I can't control any of that, right? My kids are cray cray. My husband's mad that I'm on my phone. Like blah, 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 blah. You're gonna have a million things, okay? You can only control what you can control. And if you can't commit, to quit breaking the promises to yourself, you're gonna never be able to overcome or to get to that level to where you can win the more love award and be up there like a crying train wreck because you've helped so many people, right? Like you just don't know. So I think you just have to get your mind right, find whatever that reason is, and really that has to be at the forefront. And I think it was Rachel Jones, Another person I always Facebook stalk who doesn't realize who I am. Shout out, Rachel. You'll see this on the replay probably. And she said one time at an event, I think we were in Austin. I don't know where we were. And she said, like, your why has to be more than your kids because your kids are going to love you if you're a diamond, a triple, you quit tomorrow. Like, your kids are still, your kids are still going to be there. So why are you doing this? 
And for me, my why was the freedom to keep me home because the memories and the time and the things that I wanted and that were important to me took precedence over everything else. I love that. And that's what's going to push you through. It's so good. I love when you said, um, you know, you have to, you have to stop breaking those promises to yourself because I'm a true believer that self-worth comes from you keeping the promises to yourself. You believing yep. that you're going to do what you told yourself you were going to do. Right. And so like the way that you build your self-worth and self-confidence is by keeping those promises. Nobody else has control over those promises or anything else. The only person that has control over that is you. And that's how you build your own self-confidence. Cause people ask me all the time, I'm just not as confident as you. That's because you keep breaking the promises to yourself. How do I become confident as you are? You, you do what you told yourself you were going to do. Not what somebody else told you to do, but what you told yourself you were going to do. Um, so I want you to, to talk a little bit about maybe some things that you struggle with. Like even still, you know, maybe some things that you feel like, okay, these are areas where I still need to work on and tweak and get better. Um, that you feel like other, that, that other people can relate to. I mean, I heard you say that you deal with depression. I know depression is, is a real thing. Um, and that there's the, the, that, that, you know, it's going to affect your business. I mean, it's just, that's just how it is. Um, and, and how do you, how do you deal with that? Like, I don't know if it was, it, if it was postpartum or what that is. And, you know, you can choose to talk about this or not. I just know a lot of people do deal with it. Um, but I think it's just important to kind of talk about it and get it out there and let people know you're not alone. You're not the only person that deals with this. Yeah, absolutely. So for me, it was mostly just being homesick, um, and just being so far away and being isolated, but I guess in lieu of, of life happening. So I have been in business for, you know, I feel like a fossil sometimes because I've been around for almost six years, but um, I've gone through miscarriage. I've gone through having a second child. I've gone through uh, my mom getting a divorce, domestic violence in that relationship with my mom and my stepdad. Um, just so many different things, you guys. I've also had to overcome a lot of things for myself because I'm a red personality. I'm a go-getter. I hit, I hit VIP really quick. And you get there and you're like so pumped and like all these things. And then I've been pushing and growing and developing to get to presidential diamond now for five years. So I think the reason why I focus a lot on timeline with you guys is because that's something that you're going to run into, you know, but I look at how many ranks do we have in our company? If it took you one year to get to every single one until you made it to ambassador, yeah, that eight to nine year journey isn't worth it right? So it's perspective. So I spent my first two years like a crazy woman just growing and building and whatever. And then I spent two years in what I call like my comparison is the thief of joy phase. And I thought, wow, I got to triple diamond so quick. Who's this girl? She's already presidential diamond. Where'd she come from? Hey girl, ambassador diamond in 11 months. And here I am. And I started to let all the outside stuff put me in a funk, but I didn't recognize it because I was still showing up every day for my tribe. I was still crushing steps to success times three. My numbers were good, my paychecks were good, but it was like this perpetual um, avoidance of personal development. Wasn't acknowledging it. Oh, I ain't got time for that. I ain't gotta read nobody's book, I'm good. I ain't got time for that. That's not an income producing activity, right? So I had to go through that time period where I had to grow and I had to learn to let go and I had to shake what I call like a lot of the dead leaves off and have to realize you guys, you cannot, there's no sense in dragging 500 people to your goal just to get you there if you're not helping people get there. So what had happened was inadvertently because I'm such a go-getter and I'm a hustler and I'll freaking, I'll stay up all night, I'll wake up early, I'll do, I'll do every pop-up, I'll talk to the wall, like I don't care, right? But what happens is, is when you're that kind of personality, you steamroll people. And I know y'all already listened to Kelsey's awesome, you know, color personality stuff. So you already know, right? So I had to grow as a person. I was able to grow this business to triple quickly because of work ethic and urgency and what have you, because success loves speed. But I was not going to be blessed for the next thing until I fixed my things. Does that make sense? So it was a lot of growth and a lot of just chilling out. Um, I never break promises to myself. That's a pet peeve of mine. Also goes with my personality color. If I say I'm going to do something, I'll do it. I don't care if I'm die trying, I'm going to do it. Um, that's just me. So that wasn't the problem. The problem with me was getting over myself and failing forward and learning myself more as I kept growing. So um, what I could tell you guys is I did not start any personal development until the last 18 months. 
zero. I didn't read a book. I didn't listen to a podcast. I didn't read a leadership thing. Nothing, nothing. Just hustle and heart, hustle and heart. It'll be fine. We're going to get there. We got there once. We'll get there again and just flying by the seat of my pants. And you can't do that. <laughs> Newsflash, you can't do that. It only lasts for so long because then you turn around and there's nobody there because they haven't grown with you. You've grown for them, but not with them. And, and it doesn't work like that. So I'm probably totally not even talking about what you want me to talk about. But for me, it was really just the realization that I know that I can do it, you but I have to stay laser focused and I have to be willing to have that outside personal development and sideline relationships. You guys, fun fact, I, my enroller quit way early on. Actually, I was the first distributor she enrolled. I went triple, she went presidential, and then she quit. Don't know why, don't care, never asked, okay? So I was the first person she ever enrolled. And I took myself triple diamond, never given a customer, never given a distributor, never expected it. Hustle and heart. I'll do run my own business. I'll grow my own thing. No problem. Right. But in the process of that, I became isolated. I had no upline, no sideline relationships. I was doing my own thing. I wasn't feeding my mind with good stuff. I was on an island. And when you're on an island, what happens when you're isolated? Who creeps in? Just freaking devil came a knocking and I wasn't addressing it because of my personality and it took, I, ha I call it my Britney meltdown of 2017 after I had our second kid. And I thought like, oh, you just keep having babies and life moves on. Like it doesn't slow you down. You did had one baby, you got two babies. Son. And I was like totally derailed. I had this epic meltdown and my husband was like, what happened to you? And I'm like, I don't know. I was just crying about everything. And I had to, it was like in that moment, I was like, I got to get it together. And I just started diving in. Like if someone told me to read it, I read it. If someone told me to listen to it, I listened to it. If someone said to do the personality test, I was like, okay, whatever. I did it. And my whole mindset shifted, but I had to have the breakdown before the breakthrough. And I know you've heard somebody say that, I don't know how many times, but you have to own it when it happens and then do something about it. And that's so really good. where it changed. It's so good. So let me ask you this, you know, it's funny because like, I love self-development. I'm like obsessed with it. My team knows. I'm like, I preach it all five, every five seconds, every word. If somebody it's comes so to me, important. if somebody comes to me, I'm like, what are you doing for self-development? It's the first question I ask. But my question is, is you were on Zooms before, you know, you had heard about self-development, you know, for the, the, before 18 months ago, what stopped you? Do you think from doing it? Because I think that there are a lot of people that are listening right now and are going to watch the replay that are going to be like, okay, yeah, like I've heard self-development. I'm still not doing it. Like they're, they're in the exact same boat you were 18 months ago. Like, what do you think held you back from actually just like opening your mind up to doing it? That's a good question. I think part of it is because in my mind, like when you achieve this like six figure income, you almost are like, do I really need more? I'm like, I got comfortable and economically things are going to happen. Your paychecks are going to go up and down. Like you're running a real business, right? Just like pumpkin spice lattes, Starbucks ain't selling pumpkin spice lattes all year round. So their sales for pumpkin spice lattes are going to be a lot higher in fall than the rest of the year, right? It's a business. You're going to have that. But what happened was like you, I achieved this six figure thing super fast and I had paid off the things and we were traveling and, and, and all these epic things were happening. And then I was kind of like, okay, you know, but I like, okayed myself without really realizing I just settled. Okay. So then what happened was my team didn't know. Cause I'm like this rah, 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 we're doing all the things and enrollments were great and whatever. But in my mind, I had shut down the more aspect, which is really odd that I would win the more love award. Right. But I had to make that shift. So I would hear it. And then it was like, I don't have time. Oh, I already know that. I don't need to do that. I enroll all the people, blah, blah, blah. I don't need that. You know, my team's doing good. I don't need that. This is happening. I don't need that. So I was just deflecting it, deflecting it. You know, back then we didn't have Zoom. We had Periscope. Okay. And I would be listening to Periscopes and I would listen to that stuff. And I'm like, okay, it's not like I ignored it. But if you told me to go read this, go listen to that. I was like, man, okay. So I had to rewire myself. Like I'm in the shower, podcast playing. I'm in the car. Instead of like jamming out, I got a podcast playing. Like it was just trying to fit it into my day because it was a new habit, okay? And new habits take time, right? Like 21 days. So I knew like, okay, 
in terms of figuring out what this new identity for me was going to look like, I ha your identity is like the thermostat for your entire self-worth. So I'm like, what am I even doing? You know, like, if I, what, what, where, where, where am I going? I don't even know. Right. So you, you have to have those conversations with yourself and whether that's you and God or you and the wall, whoever you're talking to, like you have to have that. So for me, it was just a matter of realizing that that was my missing piece because it wasn't enrolling. It wasn't social media. It wasn't work ethic. It wasn't income producing activities. It wasn't duplication. It wasn't system and process. So what do I have left? the most important part, right? Which is the personal development. So I thought because I was always successful, I had a big career with Target. I had a big career with Enterprise Rent-A-Car. I went to school for advertising, marketing, and management. I triple majored. I dual minored. I knew about all the things. I didn't need this. And that's a freaking lie. Okay. If I would have figured this out like three years ago, I'm sure my journey would have looked a lot different, but I love the journey that I've had because it's brought me through so many different seasons and has really allowed me to help the right people and put the right people in place. And my heart is in the right place. And even just personality colors and all those things to be able to connect with everyone versus steamroll, you know? So it's just been crazy. The shift, absolutely crazy. So yeah, is your second color yellow? It was, but now it's green. Lately. Yeah, I was going to say red excess, yellow or green. Um, so my, my next question is what do you feel like you've learned so far from personal development? Like, like in this journey, like what do you think like the biggest takeaway is, is it more of just like self-awareness and like understanding, Hey, like I'm a flawed person. Cause I love, I think so many people can relate to that. Cause what I heard you say when, you know, the reason why is number one, you felt a little complacent, but number two, you felt like it's almost scary to do self-development sometimes. Yeah. Like it's intimidating, right? Because it's like, well, I'm fine. But like that, I'm fine. If you really thought you were fine, you would do it because you would want to get better. But the people who say I'm fine I and don't know. do it are the ones that know, oh, this is going to shed some light on some stuff I'm going to have to deal with and I'm going to have to fix. And it could be a little bit scary. And I think that like, I know that I dealt with that because I think reds do struggle with this. It's like, I got it. I'm going to get it done. You tell me what to do and I'm going to do it. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it. And we do so much doing that we forget that there's an improving before you do it. Oh right? yeah. It's yeah. like, it's like, Oh, let me just go learn how to shoot a basketball. Okay. But like, if you've never been taught the proper form on how to shoot a basketball, then you're never going to get bad, better if you're not practicing the right way. Right. And it's the same thing. Uh oh, hold on a second. Let me see what's happening. I don't know. It's doing something crazy. Okay. Okay. Um, so I think that that's like the biggest thing is we just, just, was it some self-awareness that like you've learned? I'm just, I'm just curious to, to know what. Yeah. What, you got it. I feel like I, I can't give you like this major neon sign moment because it, it just really had to do with accountability. So like I just told you guys, I knew I was doing, and you can't just do it for like a couple days and then fall off, you know, like, oh, I was so good posting. I was so good messaging. I was so good popping up. I was so good, blah, blah, blah. And then you're so not good for a week and then you're good. And then you're not good at a, like I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt, my head went down on the pillow every night. And I knew like, I got this. I did all the things and it wasn't me thinking I was God's gift. It works. It was like, I legitimately, my personality, like I knew I did all the things. Right. And I helped my people and I, and I was preaching and here's the funny thing. And I talked to Cammie about this. And when she came to see us, I preached it all the time, all the time, but I never did it. I talked about it. I shared the people that I like to follow. I shared the people that brought me inspiration in my prior careers. I talked and talked and talked about it, but then I was a hypocrite because I didn't do it because I didn't think I needed it. Stupid, right? So I think for me, really, again, the neon sign, if I had one, would be it's not what is like happening to me. It's for me, right? It's a mindset thing. And it's not, what am I not doing that I, I, I'm not getting to presidential and I'm not getting to, to ambassador? What am I not doing? It was, what do I need to do more of, right? So then I was like, crap, what could I possibly do more of? And then it was like, 
personal development, per, you know, like, hello, the answer's there. And, and I finally just did it, you know? So for me, I think um, another thing to you guys is that I, I came up with like the arsenal of people that I really love that had nothing to do with this business because I like eat, sleep and breathe this business and everyone in it. And I needed outside perspective. So whether that's like Rachel Hollis, Ed Milet, um, Chris Hogan, who else do I love? Um, can't think right now, but I'll give you more names. Trent Shelton, whomever, right? Yeah. That I needed to get the outside people. I needed that. That was just something that I really wanted. And then I needed to actually listen to it in those nooks and crannies, like I said, and make it a point because that's whatever, wherever you're steering is where you're going to stare. So if you're thinking about enrolling loyal customers and all you're going to do is enroll loyal customers. And if you're thinking about distributors, you're going to enroll all these distributors and forget about customers. And if you're looking at one thing, you're not going to look at the other things. So you have to have a really good game plan. And um, I talked to my team a lot about this, about like your perfect day schedule. I don't know how you do with like time management and stuff, Kelsey, but I have them right down like old school, not on an iPhone like sun up to sundown, what their perfect day is like. And I say like, you have to include personal development in that your daily six list, all those things down to like the specific. So who are you listening to today? How many pages are you reading today? Who are you messaging today for how long, how many messages, right? And getting really clear and specific. And honestly, you guys, it all goes back to mindset. I decided I was going to go to Rachel Hollis's Rise Business Conference in November. And because of this business, it was just another trip that I just took and went and paid for and, and poured into myself for the weekend. And one of the speakers on there talked about um, mindset. And he said, you can have like a BC or an AC mindset. And it was a blame and complain mindset or an accept and change mindset. And even sitting there in that conference where, again, I had already blossomed into this totally different person from a self-awareness perspective, I was like, I had spent a lot of time blaming and complaining when I didn't even realize it. Because I'm like, why did I get to triple so fast and I'm stuck? Why am I still here after so long? Why is this happening to me? And that was my mindset. I would never translate that to my tribe, but it was all I was thinking. And I was hitting my head against the wall. And as soon as I accepted like, hey, for whatever reason, you were meant to hit a mountaintop really fast and then grow a whole lot through the valleys over the next five years. It's the, to the point now where I'm so confident in, in where we are as a tribe and where my mind is as, as a leader that like I have literally 0% fear that it's not happening. Like I'm just like, oh, we're going to go triple two ambassador. You're going to see me up there on the stage with the microphone. Like I, and I would have never claimed something crazy like that. So it's amazing when you just accept what's happening as it happened for you and not to you. And then you have to put in the action steps to change it because acceptance is just half. If you're not changing anything to go along with it, your habits are going to stay the same and you're going to fall right back into your funk. So I think again, you guys don't let comparison take your joy. Don't worry about things that you can't control and really accept whatever it is that you need to do more of to help you grow. And you're going to see some epic changes. I love that. And I want everybody to put in the comments, like right now, do you feel like you're more of an AC or a BC person? And I think we all, like, I can even say there's some things that even, you know, that I still, you know, BC about, right? Like, and, and I think that it's just understanding where you're at in the process and, and taking control of saying, you know what, like part of becoming, I think an AC person, like accepting and changing is recognizing that you always were at one point a BC person, right? Like, like, cause if you weren't, you would be exactly where you wanted to be. Right. And I think that like, we have to recognize, like if we're blaming and, and complaining, then we have to understand that that's, that's what's holding us back, but we can't change it until we do that. Um, do you feel like there was, there's a time, and I think a lot of people go through this in self-development. I know that I did, um, where it was like, okay, crap. Like I see, like, because I'm like aware now, like of all of these things that I need to fix, um, now I need to fix them, you know, but I'm also like aware that like some of this is, it, it's, it's hard to face some of that, you know, um, how did you kind of battle through that? And, and how did you coach your team on this part of it too? 
I think it goes back to emotional resiliency. So it takes a lot for me to get knocked off course. It's just how I'm wired. But emotional resiliency goes back to, and I took notes that I'm not even paying attention to them, which I probably should, but that's fine. I usually just talk anyways. Um, my tribe's always like, why do you take notes? I'm like, I don't know. Just, I just talk from my heart. It works better anyways. But I think you have to decide, are you committed or are you interested? Because if you're committed, you're going to do the things. If you're interested, you're going to treat it like a hobby, right? So I think number one, that's going to be the biggest thing. But for me, in terms of like seeing it, embracing it, and then like trying to fix it, <laughs> personality wise, I just want to fix all of it. Because that's just, we're just going to do this today. It's just going to fix today. And that's not realistic. Um, another thing too, you guys, I got really good with that emotional resilience piece, but with like talking to my tribe. So it was okay to let them know like, Hey, people drop rank. I've dropped rank. I've gone through these things. I've walked through these things. I've had top leaders of mine leave. I've had people disappoint me. I've had these things happen and, and not to, to not coming from a place of fear or frustration or any of it, but just sharing because people will resonate with what you're experiencing. So I don't care if you have one person on your team or a hundred people on your team, you've walked through something. And for some reason you want to put yourself on this pedestal, like you've never had anything happen to you. And I think you're doing yourself a disservice by not ripping off the bandaid and it kind of sharing how that process looked. It's a lot easier to share the process when you've walked through it than when you're currently walking in it. So I think you have to fix yourself first kind of one piece at a time and i always say like you can't eat an elephant in one bite so you have to figure out what is the most important thing so if it's like communication with your spouse not managing your time wisely you know not commit you're you're too interested and not committed enough or you're saying yes to too many people and you're stretching yourself too thin or you say you're going to do something and you never do it you're never a finisher you got no follow through your potentials feel that your team feels that they don't trust in you. How are they going to trust you when you don't trust you? It's not, it makes no sense, right? So you can't possibly try to fix everything. You know, you have to figure out, okay, what are the things that I can control? You can control how you react and adapt. So if you know that, Hey, there is a big disconnect for my, you know, relationship building with my team or my, you know, level setting with them. You guys, sometimes you have to get down to their level, not in terms of levels like DT, Ruby. I don't mean that. I mean, get eye to eye with them and get in the trenches with them and say, Hey, like I see you, I, I've experienced this. I felt it. And this is what I've done. And again, it goes back to what are you reading? What are you filling your cup with? What are you listening to? And 99% of the time, I, I never asked that question. And some of you are probably wondering, well, how did you get to Triple Diamond with no personal development? I worked my ass off. But I didn't teach other people how to do the same thing. I just blindly worked like a loony person. And then again, you turn around and you don't have the, the invested entrepreneurial people that you want with you, right? You don't have that sisterhood, that brotherhood. It's not there. It's just a bunch of people that you just dragged to get to where you wanted to go. So I think, again, you have to be, you know, willing to determine what side of the mindset shift you're on and then where your resiliency level is and understanding that like the struggle equals strength. You're not going to be strong if you don't struggle. You have to put those two things together. So whatever that is, but you have to fix like your, your own communication, your own perfect day schedule. What can you control, right? Where is your time going? What are you doing? Yeah. You know, are you busy or are you productive? Yeah, it's so good. And it goes back, um, John Mal Maxwell talks about too, like one thing that I love that he says is, it's like, if you need to be inspired, do something at an event, like do, do go to an event or like get on a zoom or watch a training or do something. That's, that's an event, right? Because that's going to encourage, um, inspiration and it's going to encourage you to make a decision. It's going to motivate you. However, what we're all seeking is progress because an event is not going to encourage the progress. It's in a moment in time and then it ends the journey, the process equals progress, right? And it's going to mature you and it's going to take time and it's going to change you versus kind of challenge you at, 
like we're doing on here, we can't do the process for you. We can create an event for you, but that process is going to develop you. And you were the only person that can take yourself through that process. We can create the event. Corporate can create conference. We can create green carpet. We can create these trainings. We can create all of these things. But at the end of the day, if you're not, like she said, committed to changing, you're not going to get any results in this business because we're, you have to realize it takes time. It's just going to take some time and everybody can do it if you're willing to put in that, that effort. And so I love that. So thank you for sharing that. Um, is there anything else that I know you said you took some notes, so I want to kind of leave it open for you to share some stuff that's just on your heart. I feel like, um, I do want to ask you just like what your enrollments are and where most of your enrollments come from. Like, are you utilizing host to post? Like what, what is, what does that look like for you? And then, um, I also want to, you to kind of get into a little bit about how you, um, do your whole newbie situation. Okay. So essentially for me, you guys, um, I had mentioned earlier, I've not got into TikTok yet. So I don't know if you guys are having awesome success on TikTok, but I have not. I'm still um, enrolling like double digits and not that I'm satisfied because I'm never satisfied, but I'm still having a, a healthy amount of enrollments um, coming from Facebook and Instagram. So um, I, again, no surprise was the person that was like, oh, I don't need host to post. I don't need host to post, you know? Who needs host to post? So I was like a year behind everybody else on host to post. Um, because again, that's my personality. I'm like, ah, ah. so I um, have host to post has really been awesome for me right now in terms of just growing my network and just ensuring that I'm having a lot of conversations and again, committing to doing it every day and carving out the time in my perfect day schedule, which is never perfect, but we strive for it to be perfect, right? If you write it down, you're more inclined to do it. So I have that and I, and I carve out the time for that. So I would say host to post right now is really awesome. Um, and that's mostly where my distributors are coming from. Most of my loyal customers are actually coming from Instagram lately, like through my stories. Um, I'm really diligent about initiating conversations with likers and commenters. So I'll just say, you know, hey, thanks so much for the love and support for my family and for my business. I really appreciate you. That's been my line literally for six years. And if you're good with your social media and you're consistent and you're branding yourself and people know you before they know your thing and you're building relationships, they'll be like, Hey, yeah. And what is that coffee you, you don't shut up about? Or what is this? Or what is that? So, um, definitely for me, my jam is always still Facebook and Instagram. I was, um, doing a lot of pop-ups. So I was contacting like local businesses that were small privately owned businesses. So once we get through this quarantine situation, I'll go back to that. I actually just signed, oddly enough, um, planting seeds, you guys. I always talk about planting season with my team, the fruits of your labor. You're not gonna see the good things until like six months out. So all the hard work, the time, the effort, the consistency, every day, day in, day out, grinding, excited for four to six months. But when you stop working your business well for for any amount of time, you'll see that within 30 days, 30 to 60 days max, you'll see, you know, the relevancy of the lack of, whereas it takes you four to six months to see the good things. So all those businesses I popped up in just saying, Hey, you know, I'm a local small business owner. And I was on a call with Cami on the show me the money call talking about this a little while back, my scripts and stuff I can share if Kelsey wants them. But now those business owners are signing up as distributors with me because of the relationships that I built you know, in November, December, October, um, just kind of talking to them about the business and they've watched me on social and seen my journey and they understand the scope of what's happening right now economically. And I'm not skipping a beat and my attitude's still positive and life's still moving on and nothing gets me down and we're going to keep trucking and right. Nothing changes, you know? So that's probably the biggest thing for me. And then what was the other thing you said? There was one newbies, one. newbies. How do you train? Your oh, what, do, what do I do with newbies? You mean? Yeah. Like, how do you train them? Like what's kind of your, your process? Like when you sign somebody, cause I know you okay. said you sign like double digits most months. Um, and that's a lot of people to put in the system and get trained and get their customers and all that stuff. So I want to know kind of what your process looks like. Yep. So another big lesson that I had to learn you guys is the wheel is already round and corporate already created it. So you don't need to go make like your own cray cray training. Okay. That was another trap I fell in because I had my own team page and I made all these files and I did all the things and I was putting out all this information and it's like, why? 
right? Because corporate does an amazing job. So I do have a seven day newbie training. I call it like a newbie boot camp page where it's like seven days broken down into units. It's really simplified. And I make sure, you know, my important things for a newbie is we launch face to face on a Zoom or FaceTime within 48 hours. And it's really just to talk to them and say, hey, I'm a real person, welcome, and set the expectation with them, you know, help them get their announcement post crafted, help them make the initial contact to their chicken soup list, like some of those things that when you're new, you're afraid of, right? Tackling those things and setting the expectation from the beginning to say, hey, you're gonna have naysayers, you're gonna have people that think you're crazy, you're gonna have people that say no, you're gonna have people that block you and mock you and just kind of set the expectation of, hey, that's normal, right? And then from there, we just kind of take it day by day throughout our training process and help them understand the loyal customer and the distributor and, and all that. And then just get them into social, teach them how we start posting right away. Like what more perfect time to have a virtual business than right now. Now I know we made the shift that we wanted to get off online and get in person, but unfortunately, obviously we've got coronavirus and we can't do that right now. So what a awesome thing to have as a backup plan is running your business from social. So I really think leveraging the resources that are already there, getting them hooked up on connect app, showing them the training videos and really just plugging them in. We don't have to reinvent anything. It's already there. And then live stream, you guys, we've got live stream events. I don't know if any of you have purchased the live stream option um, for 149. You can plug in and, and I've done some screen sharing on my newbie page. So they can really get the heart and the culture of the company um, from the beginning, whether that's a prayer, you know, in the beginning or the ending or a great segment or whatever it is. And just not being afraid to wear your heart on your sleeve with your team and, and create that vision. Because again, you guys, whether you've got one person or a hundred, it doesn't matter. You're a leader. And that person's looking up to you to, you know, exhibit the right behavior. So I think just staying close to, to the team, like you guys who are on here tonight, zooming, you know, obviously it's 10, 11 at night and you probably have other things you want to do, but you're here because you're committed and you're going to do big things. So that's about it. I love it. I love it. That's so good. Okay. Is there anything else that you had in your notes that you want to make sure you cover anything you want to say to anybody that may have been in the No, I just, I think I pretty much covered all of it. You guys, the biggest thing for me, um, and probably like the book that I always, I love in terms of not beginner leadership, but maybe if you feel like you are having trouble with like the right habits, I really love high performance habits. It's like one of my favorite reads. I've read it a hundred thousand times truthfully. Um, and I get something new every single time and it's on audible. So if you're looking for something um, that you really need to figure out how to rewire your brain or even just wire it initially for more. I think high performance habits is, is one of my favorites and he kind of talks about them and breaks them down. I think you can even get the book for free right now and just pay for shipping. Um, it's upstairs right now. Cause I was just reading an excerpt from it, but it's from Brandon Bouchard. Oh, here it is. Dun, 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 dun. High performance habits from this dude. Um, he was one of the speakers at rise business conference and, and he really had a lot of um, heart and emotion and really just translates a lot of the things in the culture that we have within our company. And I think that's it. You guys just do things that make you uncomfortable because they're, they're making you uncomfortable for a reason. Um, I actually put on my dream board, I have it next to me, crazy things. And I've crossed off so many of them, but I keep adding crazier things on there. Um, and to me, a crazy thing, I put read one book a month is a crazy thing for me. Read one book a month. And some of you guys might read a book a week or two books a week, right? And so whatever it is, like you really have to even kind of look at yourself and fact check and say, hey, everybody did goals on January 1st. If you were with us January 1st, you did a goal sheet, you did a dream board, you did all the things. Have you looked at it since January 1st? And probably more than half of you would tell me no. Because we do it because we were told to do it because it's the thing to do and we did it and that's it. But is it posted up? Like mine's right here next to me on the wall. It's on the cell phone background on my phone. So I see it every time my phone is locked. You know, or what are you doing to surround yourself with the things to remind you of where you want to go? You know, and again, leaving other people's opinions out of it. And sometimes, unfortunately, that's your spouse, that's your friends, that's your family. Um, and really just connecting and opening up the lines of communication. And the last thing I'll leave you all with is the communication piece is really important, especially if you're a red, because you unintentionally just keep going and going and going and going and going and you don't know how to turn off. So then you like 
you're supposed to have date night, but like, no, I'm too busy. You're supposed to watch a movie, but no, I can't do it. I got to do this. And you're supposed to play with your kids and put your phone down, but oh no, I got to send just one more message, you know? And then maybe you're a blue and you're like, I haven't sent a message in three days, you know, like everybody's so different. So you just have to really kind of embrace where you're at with that. And then again, pick one of the things that you know you can work on the most. And if you're completely unorganized, and don't write a schedule and don't have a six list and don't carve out time for yourself in the morning, wake up, and wake up early or stay up later, whatever. That's where I would start. Don't try to do everything at one time because you're not going to be successful with it. And then just write them down and commit to them. Another thing I really like, um, and you don't have to buy it, but I, I hate it and I love it is the Rachel Hollis planner. Look how big this thing is. It's like a book. Okay. And it literally forces me every single day to write down my entire day, like five to thrive checklist. What is my empowering belief of the day? What results do I want? What's something that's going to hold me back that I'm not going to, maybe it's going to get in my way today. Maybe that's the kids being home, right? Cause of quarantine, whatever. And then it literally is my whole plan for the entire day. Y'all, I don't plan nothing because I do whatever I want all day. Every day was my old mentality, right? So I forced myself into buying something that I knew I was not going to like because it forces me to create new habits. It forces me to be uncomfortable and it forces me to really lay it out. And I'm telling you guys, it's been a game changer. And it's even things like when my phone is down, when I'm making lunch, when I'm waking up, when I'm showering, like everything, you guys, what I'm plugging into, what I'm listening to, how much of it I'm listening to breaks it down like through the week, like it is really detailed. So I think if you don't have a system in place, commit to yourself that you're gonna get a system in place and that you're gonna make your perfect day schedule and you're gonna be able to adjust accordingly as curveballs are thrown at you and just really, really keep your eyes on, um, on what's most important to you guys. And that's your deeply rooted reason. And I promise you guys, the only difference between where you are right now and where I am is because I've just never quit. I'm not okay. going anywhere. I love that. I love that. This was so good. Seriously. Thank you so much. Um, somebody asked, where did you get the planner? It's a Rachel Hollis priority planner. It's at target. It's the start today line. Okay. Yeah. Cool. But I, I literally to this day, I've used it since it came out and I, I hate it, but I love it. <laughs> like, but I hate it, but oh it's made God. such a difference. And again, like I, I just do it, you know, whether that's journaling, whatever it is, I do it every single day day whether I feel like it or not and yeah that's the, the kicker I love it I'm gonna pray over us real quick before we hop off and then um I'll let you go but I just want to say thank you so much thank um you guys. Dear Jesus, we just come to you and we're just so grateful for every single thing that you've already done in our lives. We're so grateful that Ash has spent the time with us, Jesus, and we're so grateful for the heart that you've given her. Um, we ask that you just give her abundance in her business and bless her greater than she ever imagined. Um, and just keep showing up big in her life like you've been doing recently. And Jesus, I ask that for everyone on here that you give them just peace that makes everybody else so confused that when everything is going is crazy right now in the world that every single person that is watching this or or right now or is going to watch the replay that they just have a peace that is so confusing to other people because it's beyond any human understanding and i ask you lord just to give us the abundance that you've made for us, not the abundance necessarily of square footage in our house or the abundance in our bank account, but the abundance of love, the abundance of joy, the abundance of forgiveness, the abundance of grace, the abundance of all the things that you can give us. Give us that type of abundance because that is what's going to make our life full. Not our bank accounts, not our house, not our cars, none of that, Jesus, but let us turn to you during these crazy times um, and just be reminded um, of what our priorities truly are and what the priorities that you want us to have are. And we're so grateful for everything you've done. We're so excited for everything you're going to do. And because we know that you're going to use everything, everything that's happening right now and turn it around for our good. Thank you again, Jesus. We love you so much. Amen. Love you guys. Thanks for hopping on. Bye, Ashley.